and welcome to How to Atlas Reactor with your host, Beery333. Hey guys, you guys know I love this game. This game's amazing. Uh, if you don't know, Atlas Reactor is a simultaneous turn-based MOBA. MOBA is a, ma uh, excuse me, a multiplayer online battle arena, much like your Overwatches or your League of Legends. It's a smaller ar arena where, multiple, where players compete against each other. Now, simultaneous turn simply means that everybody makes a decision and it all happens at the same time. You have roughly 20 seconds, I believe, to make all the decisions that you're going to make for that one turn. Everybody makes their decisions. It all happens. So, you know, that, that's basically the definition. That kind of separates it from a lot of your turn-based uh, games, whereas most turns are you one turn goes and the next person goes. This all happens at the same time. So keep that in mind anytime you're playing. That even if you, you take damage that's going to kill you, your attacks and actions still go off because they all technically happen at the same time time um so we're gonna do this military style and uh we're just gonna go over three basic areas i'm gonna give you how the basic uh, conditions of the game works you what to do pre-battle you know how to set up for that kind of stuff as well as a couple key factors in the actual gameplay itself following videos are going to be more specific about the, the freelancers themselves i'm gonna ignore them for now okay keep that in mind Let's be honest, guys, there's one key factor that everybody needs to know in any type of competitive or any type of game, for that matter. How to win. Very important, right? Victory conditions. Now, in Atlas Reactor, it's very simple. It's first to five kills or most kills in 20 turns. So pretty simple. If you get five kills in the first five turns, your team wins. If it's at 20 turns and you have one kill and the other team has zero kills, your team wins. The only time those factors don't come into effect is if it is a tie game at 20, it is become sudden death and you have to go until the, the next kill. So the game does bounce back and forth. It, it's, it's, you know, you got to keep those, these things in mind. The game is broken up into turns. Okay. So, as I said, it's a simultaneous turn-based game. You have your prep phase, your dash phase, and your blast phase in that order. So a prep ability or whatnot, which is usually healing, buffing, debuffing, will go off before all other actions. A dash, which is like a teleport, a flash from legal, you know, uh, something to move, a movement ability typically, will go off next. And a blast is the last phase, which is typically most of your damage dealing abilities, will go off as the final phase. And then the last actual step that's past that is your move phase. Now... Keep in mind that you can only do one of these actions. You cannot do a prep, a dash, and a blast. It's you choose which one unless they say free action. So when you choose an ability, you have to look at the map and be, consider strategy of what's more important. Do you dash out of the way of these blasts? Do you try to hit them as hard as you can before dying? Or do you heal yourself and hope you survive? There's many different options that you can choose from in, in how these things work. Now, there are free actions which occur simultaneously you know, with your action. So you could have a free action that's a prep and then a dash. So keep those in mind as well. Your abilities will describe all that in the text. Now, just as crucial as learning how the game works and how this turns work is the setup before you go into combat. Atlas Reactor is unique in the sense that during the game itself, there's no buying of equipment or leveling up. You don't change. You go into the combat as you are. So that requires a good setup beforehand. And that typically involves your ability mods, which again, I will go over more with the individual freelancers, but as you can see, uh, each ability that you have has different mods that change the ability slightly. And those can change the course of the battle based on your play style and if they, how they work well with other teammates. Um, more importantly though, is catalysts. Now catalysts are one time per game abilities one each, a prep, a dash, and a blast. These are these can be very crucial abilities. As you can see, some of them are, you know, can affect you know drastically things like giving buffs or teleporting. So to begin with, we're gonna explain the prep catalysts. Okay, you you remember you can choose one of these and you can activate them one per thing. And as you can notice, they're all free actions. So you begin with the default one is gain might for turn, which is critical shot. Might gives you a 50% bonus to your next attack. So kind of useful for some of your damage dealers. Followed by Adrenaline, which gives you Haste and Unstoppable, which is movement abilities. And lastly, Tech Turtle, which gives you 30 shields. Now these are all preparatory things, so they're going to go off before your action. Uh, next we have the Dash ones, which again is your second phase. Um, and these are all movement abilities. And as you can see, they all have a theme, Teleport. 
Uh, shift is just a teleport a medium distance, which I believe is four squares. Uh, fetter is teleport a short distance, which is only three squares, but you root the, the enemies around it. So it's really good for tanks or, or melee damage dealers because you can teleport to them and root them in place. They can't move. They're in, they're in for it. Lastly is Fade, which is one of my favorite ones. Is again, that short distance teleport, but instead, at the end, you become invisible until the next decision phase. So it's really handy if you're a squishy guy and you're in a bad situation, you just pop out and they don't know where you are. Lastly is the Blast. Now, you'll notice there's only two in here because it's pretty simple. One heals you 45 health over three turns. The other one reduces your ability cooldowns by two at the end of the turn, which is amazing, by the way. Now, remember... All the catalysts can only be used once per game. So you can choose one from each category and then you can activate all three of them during the match. But it's once you activate it, it's over with. So you've got to keep that in mind when it comes to strategy. Finally, we're going to discuss gameplay, guys. Now, there's a couple key aspects. The bottom corner of your screen is your health bar. Beneath that is an energy meter. And what that is, your fifth ability is like your ultimate ability. It's 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 groundbreaking. All of your other abilities and damage received and turns all lead up to building that energy bar up to 100%. Once it's at 100%, you can activate your fifth ability. All the other abilities have cooldowns. The fifth ability does not. So keep that in mind, abilities that grant you energy or things like that. That is what you're working towards, is that ultimate ability that can change the game, okay? Now, power-ups. Now, around the map, you're going to see a lot of these little orbs. Uh, some of which, uh, you, there are smaller health orbs anytime an enemy dies or some abilities spawn them, but there's going to be big ones and they're on these little pedestals and they take four turns to charge up, uh, except for the might ones, which start off turn two in the game. Uh, so might gives you 50% for two turns. Again, just like that ability does only this one lasts for two turns. Keep that in mind. Those power big orbs give you two turns, uh, energized increases all the energy you would get from abilities by 50%, so it makes your ultimate come up faster. Very good thing to keep in mind. Haste, which is not as useful in my opinion, but it, it, it I can see its benefit, especially for mobile characters, is it increases your movement 50%. So if you can move, I believe you can move a total of five squares and then 10 squares if you sprint, which means don't do any other action. Uh, it gives you seven squares and then seven more squares, so you can move up to 14. It's very important to get around the map that way sometimes. But again, it lasts for two turns. Uh, and the healing one is a little different. Uh, it doesn't do any of the 50% stuff. The healing one gives you 10 health as soon as you touch it, and then 20 health over two turns. So basically you get 10 health a turn. So it can make or break you, trust me. In this game, you know, health is very important. And the last thing I'm going to cover is literally cover. Atlas Reactor takes into account a cover system in the game. If you have a wall or a, a, an edge of wall between you and a ranged attack, it will reduce the damage by 50%. Now, this is crucial when positioning yourself around the map because that 50% could make or break you. Now, that does not stop melee damage. If they're one block away from you, like literally they're adjacent to you, they're going to do full damage to you Not if they're a melee. If it's a melee that's two blocks away from you, it's technically counted as a range, so you can still get some cover. Now, certain abilities ignore cover, so you got to, you know, there's always that counter to, to you know, finding cover, and some people can actually generate their own cover. So keep that in mind when you're looking around the map, cover is important. Additionally, you're going to find squares on the map that are small squares with dots in them, which are called camouflage. If you end your turn there, you become invisible for the next decision or during the decision phase. So if you walk in from one side and continue walking around to a corner, they lose sight of you once you go in there. It's a handy thing for when you end your turns, especially if you're going to use any teleports or movement abilities, they don't see you. Now, they have a good idea where you are. Keep that in mind. You can't just like walk in there and be like, hey, I'm not here. Other players are smart enough to know, hey, he's probably going in there. So they can still target towards your direction. They just don't know exactly where you are. With that being said, guys, I hope you learned something from the video. There is more to come. I'm going to be talking about Lockwood next. Um, I want to thank Kira Pones for doing the thumbnails for the series. So if you guys enjoy those, make sure you check them out. I will have his link in the description. And I will also have the seven day free trial link I have uh, that gives you full access to all the freelancers for the seven days. Helps me out with my recruiting. Maybe I can get a banner. It's really cool. I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.